Echo Yankee Zuda is in maintenance at the moment, so no flying this week, but instead I thought I'd make a video about editing because I get quite a few questions on this, on how I edit my videos, what's my workflow, what equipment do I use? Plus, I also asked you on Instagram what some of your editing questions are and I'll be answering those throughout this video. So here are my 10 simple ways that you can improve your video editing. I think the easiest way to do this is I'm just gonna share my laptop screen with you so you can see what I'm doing as I'm going through each of these tips. And let me start with one of the questions that I probably get more often than any other question when it comes to editing, and that is, what editing software do you use? Well, I started with iMovie and I started my YouTube channel on iMovie, which comes free with Macs. To be honest, you can make vlogs and edit them using iMovie on your phone if you want. The software really doesn't matter, but I moved to Final Cut Pro, and the reasons why I moved to that was because iMovie gives you two video channels. I now have three GoPro cameras on the plane, so I needed more channels. Plus I wanted to do more with things like overlays, more sophisticated sound editing, but I naturally got to that point. I started out though in iMovie, and if you're a beginner and you're just starting out in this world, you can do everything you wanna do with iMovie. Tip number one then is all around file structure. And as you produce more videos, you're gonna end up with a lot of files. And if you have a file structure that they use, which is consistent across all your videos, it's gonna make it a lot easier to find things in the future, but also it's gonna speed up your workflow. Now, my file structure has been the same pretty much since I've started. See the folders here? These are basically the libraries that I use. I'm in 2019, I've had five versions so far, and that's all to do with file space. That's just because the libraries get too big and after a while you have to create a new one. So I'm onto the fifth version of that. So I start with the year, I start with the library version, and then within that, these are all the individual movies that are within that library. So you can see the one I did about the half marathon, the Grand Caravan video, some of these you might have seen. Now within those, pretty much the structure is almost exactly the same. I then have individual folders for each of the cameras or the sources of content that I have. For example, the EOS 80D, which is the main vlogging camera that I use, the one that I'm filming on now. GoPro, C for cockpit, F for forward facing, W for wing mounted. G7X sometimes also on a Canon G7X as handheld stuff in the cockpit. I have a folder for audio and then all the other bits kind of, you know, the other bits of movies that I'm gonna drag in, maybe some audio tracks, they just live in there. All right, once you've got your files in order, then you need to start editing. So in Final Cut Pro, let me show you how I set up a new project. Notice that all of these names for each of the different projects that I have, they reflect the same naming that you saw with my file structure. So it's really easy to know which files go with which project. So all I do is I just right click basically on here, I go to new event and I'll name it exactly the same as, as I said, the name of that folder. So then tip number two, when importing, I only import the files that I need at any one time. I don't grab all the files that I've recorded for that video and import them all in one go. I'll just find the first file, import that one, import the next one, import the next one. If I wanna cut up a sequence, a flying sequence, for example, I import all the GoPro footage and just work on that. What I don't do is import everything in one go because all of a sudden your project has a hundred different files and it starts to become really hard to navigate through them and you can often forget footage that you've filmed until after you've edited and uploaded and you go back and you think, ah, oh, I forgot to put that shot in. That's happened to me a number of times. And so my next tip is lay the big story out in the timeline first. And what I mean by the big story is you should have an idea of what your video is gonna be about before you start editing. And if you've got that in your head, that's the process that you should follow when you're importing and laying out your footage. So if you take a recent flight video that I did, for example, I actually shot a specific introduction for that video. So I know that that's gonna be the first shot off the whole sequence. So I'll import that. I actually did a couple of takes for this one. You can see there's me. That's the first one. Hang on, there we go. So that's me walking towards the plane, doing the first one. Didn't actually like that. So walking back, shoot the introduction, pick up the camera. I know that this is gonna be the first shot. So I'm gonna just use the blade tool to cut there. I'm gonna cut at the beginning about there, just as I'm walking in. And then I'm gonna get rid of the top and get rid of the bottom, which leaves me with this nice short introduction, which I know is the start of the film. Then you repeat the same thing over and over again. You import the bits of video that you want. You start to build up that story story until eventually you have maybe a couple of minutes worth of story, maybe the introduction or the first act is complete. And once you're happy with that, then do just take a minute to sit back and watch that first part. And this is where the next tip comes into play because if you're watching that first act and if you find yourself getting bored, chances are your audience will too. So this is where you can start being a little bit more brutal with some of the content, even if you've got an amazing clip. Like for example, you've got this beautiful shot of you know the aircraft flying, some lovely clouds down below. If that doesn't actually help you tell part of the story, then you have to get rid of it. 
That's a very linear timeline so far. You can see it's just a single channel, but what happens if I'm using multiple cameras? Like for example, when I'm flying and I have three GoPros mounted on the aircraft, how do I import those and how do I sync those up with the audio? So let's import some footage from a flight I did previously. Let's pull in all three cameras. So I've got the main camera, this is GoPro C, this is the cockpit camera. I'm gonna drag that onto my timeline here and do nothing with it for now. Then I'm gonna import my forward facing camera and do the same, just drop it on the timeline there. And finally, the wing mounted camera and drop that on top. So you can see I've got three channels, that's my text message, three channels there. Now if I just zoom out, you can see they're all the same length. And the reason why they're all the same length is because I started and stopped them all at the same time. And how I did that is because if you actually look into the video here, if I turn these two channels off, that's what I'm holding in my hand. Let me show you what I'm holding. If you're gonna get into making videos with GoPros and you're gonna have more than one, get yourself a smart remote. It saves you so much time, this controls all the cameras I can turn them all on together and I can start them all at the same time as well but I'll just grab the audio track for this flight as well I use a series of claps like a clapperboard it's been done in movie making for decades it's nothing new I just basically clap so that when my hands are clapping I can hear it on the audio track but I can also see it on the camera itself so let me just play this here you can see there I'm just doing three claps the reason I do three is because if you zoom into this area here you can actually see those three claps are quite easy to see and then on the audio track I do the same thing three two one you can see those three peaks. All I really need to do is very roughly line these three peaks up with these three, turn this audio down, go back here and play. All right, the camera three, two, one. And that's how I sync up the audio. Now you can make micro adjustments as well. Sometimes you have to just nudge it a frame backwards or forwards. And it does sometimes go out of sync if you have long pieces of footage as well. But to get it synced up, you can see it only really takes about a minute or two to import those three channels, import the audio, line up those three claps, and you're basically off and running. Once that audio is in, I'll turn down the other channels because the GoPro naturally records obviously the hum of the engines and the atmospheric noise. You want to get rid of all of that. And then I'm just going through and I'm listening out to the bits the footage that I either want to keep from a visuals point of view or if I'm saying something that I want to keep in so the main dialogue maybe some of the radio calls but you'll probably notice as well what I'm not doing is I'm not actually bothering about the different cameras you can see here I can turn this camera off so I've got the front view I can turn this one off so I've got the cockpit view I don't care about that at the moment as much I'm really just keeping those three channels in and building that story out and then when it comes to the final run through when I'm looking at shot variety which I'll talk about in a second that's when I start to determine well which camera angle is the best to have on top of that audio and that kind of leads me on to my next tip which is you want to try and edit your video all the way through in one go and not keep going back and re-watching parts and sometimes it's tempting just to go back and watch the bit that you like again and just start tweaking your intro and thinking oh maybe if I put this graphic on the top but you don't want to fall into that trap because that will really slow you down just do real rough edits and get that first rough draft done then you can go back and start tinkering basically and optimizing that edit. So keep editing your footage just as you would have been doing and then when you get to the end and you've got your whole story, what you wanna do is you wanna think which part of that story is best for me to use as a hook at the beginning of the content to really tell the user about what's happening in the video, but also just to entice them into continuing to watch. Now your hook can be one of two things. It can be like what we showed before, which is if you've got an introduction that you actually shot specifically for the video, or it can be like a funny part of the video or something that refers to the title. Like this one's all about oxygen in flight. Maybe it's you know me actually using the oxygen cannula. If something funny happens or if something dramatic happens, which might make the user think, oh, I wanna know what's gonna happen next. I use as a rule of thumb about a 15 second piece of uh, content which goes in before your main titles and your main introduction which really explains exactly what's going to be happening in the video the real purpose of the video and hopefully what the payoff is going to be for the user who's bothered to click on your title and thumbnail to watch your video another tip then is what i would say is light and shade is really important when it comes to editing. So we've been sitting at the desk there now. It's been very intense on the editing side of things, but with your videos and with your storytelling, it's important to break it up. So you have light parts and you have dark parts as well. So you have fast pace and slow pace, high energy action, but you also have some relaxing stuff. Music, no music, dialogue, no dialogue. Variety, and we'll talk about shot variety in a second, but variety in your editing is equally as important. That's why I picked up the camera just then and moved it away just to demonstrate the point of, you know, variety. Variety is important. 
How long does it take to edit one YouTube video? Someone else asked, how long do you normally spend editing? Well, single camera vlogs, when I'm just using the Canon 80D, going around airports, travel stuff, for example, doesn't take as long. That's probably, you can get an edit done for a 10 minute video in about three to four hours. Uh, Multi-camera stuff, when you've got the GoPros like we were looking at before, a lot longer. Um, some of the bigger flights, like the 15, 16 minute videos, they can sometimes take a day or two. And that's why quite often I can put a vlog out like my running vlog that I did all on a GoPro. And that came out the day after because I edited that in the plane on the way back from Sydney to Melbourne. Vlogs like the oxygen testing flight that I did, I think was filmed at the end of one week, edited over the weekend and released at the start of the next. So let's talk about shop variety because I have alluded to it here. And it is one of those things that will really improve the quality of the edit of your videos. So at the start of this video, I actually refer to some of the things that are coming up in this video. I start talking about shooting the ILS at Avalon. The other thing, I'm gonna be testing the oxygen system. Now I could just stand to the camera and say, well, coming up in this video today, I'm gonna to be testing the oxygen system and I'm gonna be doing this and I'm gonna be doing that. And you pretty quickly, you're gonna get bored of just looking at. So what I do instead is I actually start to overlay some of the footage that you're going to be seeing whilst I'm talking about it. And you can see that here. So I'm gonna go and practice the ILS at Avalon. It's the instrument landing system approach just because I haven't done one of those for about a month and a half. Then I'm going to fly to a place called Wardenball, just do a practice landing there. And then on the way home, I thought I'd fly a little bit higher. So and so on and so on. You get the idea. So as I'm talking and I've got those overlays on top, it actually keeps you engaged. Is it? Well, I hope it does. It hopefully keeps you engaged. Now you would have seen as well, I do this quite a lot with my camera. So I'll zoom in, I'll zoom out. That's my 10 to 18 millimeter lens. But sometimes when I forget to do that, if I just have a lock shot, I'll use that digital punch in just to variety the shot. So if you just want a quick way to get some shot variety, if you've forgotten to give yourself that variety in camera when you're actually filming, just punch in digitally, put a bit of sharpening on the zoomed in version just to keep it a little bit crisper than the zoomed out version because you will lose a little bit of quality. But I tell you what, your viewers will never know that you've done it. I'll just quickly touch on color correction. This isn't gonna be a tutorial. There's a whole other video talking about color correction. There's a couple of things. I have a, a LUT, which is a lookup table. And basically that gives me a color grading. If I turn that off, you can see the changes. I have different correction layers for GoPro compared to the Canon camera that I use because the sharpness levels are a little bit different. If I just highlight over here and turn it off and turn it on, you can see the difference and that's the look that I like for my videos. Anyway, color grading, color correction, there's like a whole other video in that. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. And I wanna focus on another tip which is gonna improve your edits so much. And it's very underlooked, but it's one of my favorite parts of the whole edit and that is audio. Now my attitude to video editing is you should focus as much on audio as you should on visuals. And I'm not just talking about the music tracks that sit underneath. I'm talking about the dialogue. Having clean, crisp, easy to understand audio is really, really important. So a couple of key tips on audio then. Obviously clean audio when you're speaking is critical. With music, when you're editing, if you can edit to the beat of the music, and you've probably, if you've watched my videos for a long time, you, you'd know that I do this a lot. Let me show you an example of that actually. Here's a video I released recently and we've got a takeoff sequence here and some music underneath. And you see these little edits here? These edits are basically four quick cuts of the takeoff roll, which are edited to the beat of the music. I'll play it for you here so you can see what I mean. That kind of bup, 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 when I edited the video. Now I could have had the long takeoff roll, which would have taken maybe 20, 25 seconds, that nice track underneath. And sure, that would have looked great, but there was nothing in the story that required me to really show the takeoff roll. I wanted to get from the ground to the air where I was actually talking about something important quickly. Edit that to the beat of the music. It's quite punchy. It's hopefully a little bit fun and it compresses the storyline as well. And finally on audio, I think it's really important as well for you to develop a style in your audio which really reflects you. And you can do that in a very simple way by just reusing the same kind of sound effects in each of your videos. You'll probably notice in my videos, again, if you've watched them for a bit, there are some sound effects like or, or, which I use quite a lot. I almost use all three of those in every single video. And eventually they, they become a bit of a calling card for the video. It's part of the style. It's the same as the way I hold my camera. It's the same as the way I speak to you. It's the same as my hand movements, which people tell me off I move them too much. So then you've got your story laid out. You've edited your story down to exactly what you need it to say. You've done your color grading. You've put your audio in. You've got your overlays, your cutaways. At that point then it really is just a case of finishing the edit off, making sure the story is as concise as possible and export it, get it onto YouTube 
and get filming the next one. If you're new here and you want to see what some of those finished edits look like, this playlist is a pretty good place to start on this channel. Otherwise, let me know your editing tips in the comments below. But thanks for watching.